Hey, what's up? Welcome back. You look good. You've been working out or something. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but if this is your first visit to my channel, I'm not the best welder in the world. I'm maybe like number three. I do this as a hobby. I've been doing it a long time, and I know it works for me. But despite doing it only as a hobbyist, unless there's something really good on TV, I like to think I'm an attentive fellow. On a scale from one to, oh, I don't know, 60-61, I'm maybe a light four. So keep that in mind during this video. I'd like to talk to you about something controversial. Well, probably not controversial, but maybe this video will make it that way. AC frequency. More specifically, TIG welding and what changing the AC frequency does and how one might go about picking a frequency to use. So what I'm about to share with you is all in my head, in every sense of that phrase. I should have probably thought this through more than I have, but here we are. Open mic night. Hopefully it'll stir some discussion. People smarter than me might chime in and shed some light on the subject for me. Perhaps consider this a veiled cry for help. Conventional knowledge holds that changing AC frequency changes the shape of the arc. Changes like the cone angle. A low frequency is supposed to give you a big wide arc. A high frequency would give you a tight or focused arc. Makes one think you might use high frequency for welding really small stuff, doesn't it? Like for pinpoint accuracy. Well, from my experience, that's a load of hogwash. That's right, I said it. Hogwash. Hey, 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 okay, okay. Don't unsubscribe just yet. Granted, I'm trying to be a little dramatic here, but bear with me. Let's give it a try. This is the HTP221, and this will go from 20 hertz to 200. We'll try it at 20 and 200, and surely we'll see a difference. Let's start with 20. Okay, so as I said, this is 20 hertz. The gap at the electrode is, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna do this at 70 amps. Machine's now set to 200 hertz. Now, maybe it's just me, but I didn't see a heck of a lot of difference between those two frequencies. At least not so far as width or focus of the arc. Now, if you haven't been sitting down till now, I recommend you pull up a chair. So we're about to get into full-blown tinfoil hat territory. This is the spot we just saw the test run at. This was run at 20 and 200 hertz. There's a little bit of a halo and just some black, I guess, carbon or something. This thing is right out of my scrap bin. I didn't really try to clean it. This is at 200 hertz. I just moved the block over, gave it a shot at 200 hertz, same amperage. And this is 20 hertz. Now, if you can make it out, you can see the 20 hertz is wider. And that's really just sort of the cleaning action of the AC arc. Now, I didn't change the balance here, only the frequency. If you look at sort of the what would have become the puddle in the center, you see there's sort of like a, a darker matte gray and then a shinier silver. That's where the puddle was trying to form or starting to form. At 70 amps for this quarter inch thick stock, it would have taken a little bit more heat than that for the short bursts I was giving it. But you can see here the puddle is technically a little bit bigger than it is on the 200 hertz shot. Here it's more speckles. But I don't think that's a function of the arc focus or how tight the arc is. In my experience, that's the heat. I mean, apart from the fact that this was the third test, in my experience, lower frequencies for the same amperage put more heat into the work. Now, if you go out there and do some research, go out and watch some videos, there are people that test this. You know, they'll set the machine low and then try to run a wide bead or set the machine high. I'm talking about frequency here and run a thinner bead. Now, I'm not calling anybody a liar, but if you go and you watch those videos really closely, I tend to find that they show contradictory results, quite frankly. The beads don't change, but you go out there and search for AC frequency, and you watch what happens. When they do get thinner beads, and we're splitting hairs here, when they do get thinner beads, I think there's a psychological element going on. Like you hear a higher frequency, so you're probably unconsciously moving and dabbing more frequently. And then I came across Jody's video at Welding Tips and Tricks, on AC frequency. And again, maybe these aren't the right words, but that one came across to me as the most honest or the one that fit my evidence the best. In fact, I watched his whole video with a smile on my face because I noted just how diplomatic he was being about the effects of AC frequency on the weld. His experience fits my experience. And what I'd like to do here is share my theory of what's going on. 
I've tried to design a little test piece to hopefully try to demonstrate what I think the effects of changing the AC frequency are. But first I just want to share what I think is going on, or at least give you the story that runs through my head when I'm setting the AC frequency. I, in fact, am pretty sure that this theory is incorrect, but again the evidence seems to fit well enough that it turns out to be a good rule of thumb for me, or a handy way to think about it, whether or not it's correct. So the electric arc is a plasma. It's high energy electrons and ions and stardust and fairy poop, all stripped from the tungsten and the shielding gas by the voltage and the current. Now, I'm no high energy particle physicist, but in a way, you can say I've got plasma in my blood. <clears throat> the only way in my experience that I've found to change the arc shape to get a wider or a narrower arc is to sharpen the tungsten to either a blunt or a sharp point. The blunter the point, the wider that arc's going to be. The sharper the point, the more concentrated and tighter it will be. The AC frequency is sort of a layer on top of that. It's what the actual molten puddle is doing while you're welding. So allow me, potentially, to introduce you to the skin effect. I think that's what they call it, the skin effect. In AC, when the frequency is very high, the current tends to run through the surface of a conductor through its skin. In low frequency, it would run through the entire cross-section of the conductor. Now, from my limited understanding, the skin effect doesn't really become prevalent until much higher frequencies than what we're talking about in TIG welding. But I find the skin effect useful to think about when I'm trying to pick an AC frequency to weld with. So the classic example is, say, welding an inside corner, in aluminum, of course. A wide arc won't really be able to get down tight into that corner. I mean, it can. People have been welding with, you know, 60 hertz AC since the beginning of time. But higher frequency helps out a bit. It helps get the molten puddle down and get proper penetration inside an inside corner joint. And if you think about it in terms of the skin effect, you can almost imagine like the current wanting to run across the surfaces instead of down into the material. Sort of get concentrated on those sharp inside corners. The same case could be made potentially for welding on the edge of a thin piece of material. Like if you're trying to do a, uh, an edge buildup and you want the puddle to stay on the edge and not sort of blob over the sides, stay very defined, that higher AC frequency and the skin effect, to me, appears to explain that. The other clue here is that lower frequency AC tends to be hotter, like there's more efficient transfer of heat to the work. If you set your machine to say 100 amps and you weld on the low end of your AC frequency, in my case 20 hertz, I find that the base material will puddle faster than if I'm at 200 hertz. And again, if we think about it in the whole skin effect tinfoil hat theory, lower frequency is kind of locally conducting through the core of the material instead of spreading out across the skin. More heat is sort of staying put underneath the point of the tungsten electrode, resulting in a faster puddle. Now, technically, if you think about it, it's really the same amount of heat, right? If you think about it as just a like a 50% duty cycle square wave, no matter what the frequency is, you've still sort of got the same power under the curve over a given amount of time. There's no reason 200 hertz shouldn't puddle just as fast as 50 hertz. But in practice, if you try to weld something at 150 or 200 or 250 hertz, you'll find that you're going to have to up your amperage. So this little test piece does nothing more than just create a lot of corners for us for the AC frequency to sort of run into, across, up, down, etc. I've never actually tried this test before, but in the time that I've been welding aluminum, I think this should demonstrate what I'm trying to demonstrate. I think the big pitfall in other AC frequency tests is that people tend to do it on just a flat aluminum coupon. So run a bead at one frequency, change the frequency, run another bead, and you see almost no difference in the two. And that, I think, is because of the flat geometry. There aren't any features for, let's say, the AC frequency to take advantage of. That changes when you go up onto an edge. I mean, this is thick, but if you're trying to do like an edge build up on some eighth inch plate, you can do it at any frequency, but it'll be easier at a higher frequency. The current sort of doesn't want to spill over, resulting in what seems to be a tighter arc or a tighter puddle. Anyway, let's give this a try. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna try one at 20 hertz and another one at 200 hertz. I made these grooves a little bit wider than I should have. These are three eighths of an inch. I should have probably made them like a quarter, but we'll give it a try. I expect the low frequency to wet out all the way into the corners, and I expect the higher frequency to almost kind of want to avoid those corners. 
I'll quench this between welds, just so I'm doing an apples to apples comparison. And then we'll try it again on the top. We'll see what the outside corners do compared to the inside corners. Okay, so I'm gonna do this at 20 hertz. I've got the machine up to 200 amps. I'm gonna try to run this a little hotter than normal, maybe even go a little slower than I usually would. I almost want to, I don't know, lose control of the puddle a little bit to make up for the fact that I milled such a large slot. I'm gonna floor the pedal, 200 amps, I'm going to try to keep it consistent between both of these. Try to run the same puddle speed. All right, 200 amps is really freaking hot. I actually thought I had the argon bottle, but it's a 50-50 mix. Argon and helium, so that's probably like 240 amps you're looking at there. But to keep it consistent, I'm going to quench this and do the same exact mess at 200 hertz. Okay, so this worked out a whole lot better than I was expecting. I'm not even going to do the welds on the outside corners because that would essentially be reproducing what other people have already done with building up edges or, you know, welding thin stuff with high frequency. But again, same current. Please disregard that rough start there. I forgot to actually open up the gas bottle. But you can see the high frequency at the same heat. I mean, it's even hotter than 200 amps. Again, I'm running a 50-50 argon-helium mix. Sort of stayed inside its little tunnel there. The way I think about it in my twisted up brain is that skin effect is having trouble sort of, I don't know, think about almost that current traveling through the surface of this, having trouble making those corners, inducing all sorts of weird eddies and almost like an arc blow keeping that weld bead confined inside that geometry. The 20 hertz, on the other hand, is, is just a bulldozer. You're getting a hotter arc because it's lower frequency and sort of a larger puddle spread because you don't have the same skin effect that you have at a higher frequency. All right, well, I think that's it for this video. I just wanted to get that off my chest. To recap, I don't think it's the skin effect that's doing this. That's just the theory that runs through my head when I'm sort of setting up for a particular weld. It does seem to explain what I'm seeing. So do higher frequencies focus the arc? Sort of. I mean, if there's the geometry around it to help whatever the physics of high frequency arcs are to focus the arc, then yes, the puddle is more constrained. But again, if you try this on a flat piece of material, you're not going to see this dramatic of a difference. So I don't know if that helped if you found that interesting or not, if it shed any light. Certainly, if anybody knows what's actually going on, I'd love to hear about it. I've just never found a satisfactory reason of why it does what it does. And I'm the kind of guy that, I don't know, if I don't know why, I'll never remember it. So, in the famous words of my buddy Forrest, I think that's all I got to say about that. I can't offer you a physical reason why the AC frequency does what it does, but I don't know, maybe that helped a little bit. Thanks for watching.